Hello, in this video I will be discussing 802.11 AC Wave 2 Multi-User MIMO. The content of this video will show how the current technology manages one of the biggest features available. Before I begin, it's helpful to understand the key features that maximize multi-user MIMO capabilities. Today's access points can leverage up to four transmitters, four receivers, and four spatial streams, which is the maximum number of clients that is possible within a simultaneous transmission group. Finally, wireless now can transmit data to multiple clients at the same time. This is very cool. The technology is capable of two or three and up to four simultaneous clients. But can the technology actually achieve four streams? More on that later. With all wireless devices, speeds and capabilities will vary depending on the environment and installed chipset. To achieve maximum performance with all the surrounding neighborhood interference, High density access point deployments with appropriate surveys are recommended. The value of multi-user MIMO can be seriously diminished if clients need frequent retransmission of data packets due to reception errors. There are many interference sources out of network administrator's control, hence the need to have access points within close proximity to clients. Additionally, the placement of the access points plays an important role for setting up optimal RF environments to achieve reliable communication. For multi-user MIMO transmission, clients must support 802.11 AC Wave 2, but this is not a requirement for all Wi-Fi communication. The mix of Wave 2 and other Wi-Fi devices will proportionally affect the probability of multi-user MIMO communication. There's a wide variety of supported link speed for devices. Regardless of device capabilities, one thing is always true. The higher the SNR, signal to noise ratio, the higher the supported link speed, we measure this signal strength in dB and start from the top of the noise signal. For environments with lots of interference noise, the total client SNR will be reduced, thus affecting the ability to achieve maximum speeds. Demonstrations throughout this video will show how two transmitters are used in the environment to set up communication between multi-user MIMO devices. But you should keep in mind the other available transmitters can be leveraged to provide additional signal strength and reliability. Let's look at how the access point leverages transmitters to direct energy. This example will illustrate how two transmitter sources can provide clients with better RF isolation and higher link speeds. Signals coming from the two transmitters are highlighted with green and red sine waves. Each transmitter has the ability to adjust phase and amplitude. The math calculations needed to make these adjustments are handled in real time by the embedded chipset, but if we had control, I will illustrate how we can make changes to the sine wave to affect communication. For example, let's just say the current green and red throttle settings for phase and amplitude represent optimal signal positioning indicated by the yellow dot. With bidirectional access point and client communication, adjustments can be made to fine tune new settings that locate optimal signaling anywhere on the map. If we had the correct information, we could simply move the levers to direct the energy at the laptop. In the real world, signals transmitted indoors bounces off every surface, creating unique signatures in every location. This model represents the predictive behavior from the transmitted signal within this office environment. As you can see, the signal is bouncing off walls, tables, floors, and ceilings. One of the most important outcomes from this effect is multipath interference. Using the properties of multipath interference, a unique signature, similar to a fingerprint, can be identified. This data is collected and stored. The access point will use this RF fingerprint as a reference point during the math calculations to determine if there's enough unique properties to allow segmentation for multi-user MIMO. Again, looking at real-world environments, you will usually have a mixture of clients associated to the access point with a mixture of capabilities. The typical office environment will have just about every type of client associated. To realize the performance gains of multi-user MIMO, it will be necessary to have a high density of 802.11 AC Wave 2 clients in the mix. There is another essential component to multi-user MIMO success. That is identifying clients with compatible RF transmission groups. This is important because the data transmission that fails to be received by the client 
will subtract from the overall performance gains. Through a series of transmissions, the AP will analyze all the clients and put them into cooperative high success groups. The number of devices within a group does not mean the number of simultaneous device communication, only that the devices within that same group are candidates. After additional calculations are made by the access point, the actual number of devices within the transmission group will be determined. Now let's look at our test environment and watch how multi-user MIMO is performed by the access points. As we fly through this office, we will see two 802.11ac clients and we will assume both are ready to receive data. We will also assume that both clients fall within the same RF group and have data in the buffer at the access point waiting to be transmitted. Step one is to understand the RF environment from the perspective of each client. This is accomplished by sending out a special packet. This packet contains information that is known by the client before it is sent. Because the client knows exactly the data being sent, the results from the receiver can be analyzed for specific RF signatures. We can see from this example how the training data is processed. The transmission from the access point uses multiple carriers with a very specific pattern and length of time. From the transmission view, that's from the access point, each carrier wave is clean without distortion. What will be received by the client will be very different. We saw earlier the effect of multipath interference on an indoor RF transmission. This simulation illustrates the RF changes to the training carriers from the perspective of each client. First, let's look at the received RF pattern from client one's location. Now let's look at that same pattern received from client two's location. With the two signals side by side, we can easily see the changes made by the environment. With the detailed view of both packets, the difference become obvious and more importantly, distinctive from each other. The information is collected by the client and recorded for transmission processing. Each client uses standard transmission protocols to send the information back to the access point. Now that the access point has all the information, the central processor computes the necessary phase and amplitude offsets for each data stream for each client in the group. The RF signature will be leveraged to determine the number of transmitters and spatial streams that should be used between the number of clients within the RF group. In this case, two spatial streams and four transmitting antennas can be used. From the network deployment point of view, one could assume you have no control over multi-user MIMO and the other features offered by 802.11ac Wave 2. We have covered some of the critical signaling needs for high-performance wireless access. Predictive site survey tools are the easiest way to determine Wi-Fi performance. Today's tools give you a visual representation of the RF environment and what you need to consider when deploying. Represented by the heat map is a color matrix that is used to associate signal strength or other references over the floor plan. From this predictive analysis, you can verify coverage at any location on the map. Making sure you have sufficient access point overlap and high signal to noise ratio will give you the best potential for multi-user MIMO and the highest link speeds.